Today's talks on ankle fractures, something different today, and as always, we're going to start off with the uh, marking of the anatomy uh, on a diagram here, so we'll go bit by bit. So the first bone we're marking out from the front is the tibia or the shin bone. Um, the second one we're going to mark out is the fibula. It's a bone on the little toe side of your ankle. The third one we're going to mark out is the calcaneus or the heel bone, and the fourth one is the, the talus, and the talus makes up your ankle with the fibula and the, and the tibia. Um, that's just what it looks like uh, in, a, in a real person where those bones would sit. Uh, and we're going to mark out this diagram again here so then we can go through the main three areas where you'll uh, where you'll commonly break your ankle. We'll just mark the anatomy out again. So the tibia is just marked there, the shin bone, the fibula marked out again, the uh, the heel bone and the talus. Now, the, th the first of the three most common areas you break your ankle is the fibula bone. So that's just marked out in the red area there and that's what we're going to concentrate our talk on today. Second most common area is a place called the medium malleolus which is on the big toe side of your ankle. And then the third place is an area called the posterior malleolus, which sits at the back of your ankle. And to help show you that, we're going to just draw the ankle in side profile. So the picture on the right there is what the ankle looks like from the from the side. We're going to mark out the tibia bone again. Um, the talus looks very different when viewed from the side. It's much more like a peanut. And your heel bone looks very different when looked at from the side as well. So we just mark that out there. And then the fracture is just at the back there of the tibia called the posterior malleolus. And that's um, the third most common area where, where you'll, you'll break your uh, ankle. We're going to concentrate on the fibula bone there today in the green circle that's where the majority of our talk is going to uh, focus on today and we'll do another talk on other ankle fractures in the future now fibular fractures are classified into three types um, first type is something called a Weber A where the fracture occurs just below the level of something called the syndesmosis so below those red lines there and we just marked it out in the arrow there where the fracture is um, so that red arrow there is where the syndesmosis is and that basically works out which Weber you get whether you get a Weber A a Weber B or a Weber C now a Weber B occurs at the level of the syndesmosis. So you'll see it's at a different level to the one on the on the left there. And the reason this classification is important is because it works out whether you might need surgery or not in most cases. Now, Weber C fracture, which is the third one, actually ha occurs above the level of the red lines or above the level of the syndesmosis. So we're going to go into each of these types of fibular fracture in more detail now. So a Weber A fracture, as I said, occurs below the level of the syndesmosis, so below the level of those red lines there, which are ligaments. And most patients can walk in a boot with these fractures. They very rarely need surgery. They don't often need surgery. Um, and usually you're going to be in a boot for about six weeks, but I would recommend you see your doctor for advice. Now, to get an idea of what this fracture looks like on an x-ray, we're just going to show it on the right there. So as you see, it's below the level of the joint. It's marked out in the arrow there. Um, and this is the type of fibular fracture you would rather have than, than the other two. It's, it's very rarely needing surgery. However, B, which is the next type, is at that level of the syndesmosis, as I said, so at the level of the red lines there, the syndesmotic ligaments. Some patients can get away with just needing a boot, but other patients need surgery, and that's largely at the discretion of the surgeon based on what they see on your x-ray. So to get a better idea of what this one looks like on an x-ray, we're just going to bring up the x-ray on the right here and just point out for you where that what that fracture looks like. So that's it on the right, okay, um, and marked out in the drawing there on the on the left, right? So um, what these patients can sometimes get is something called Taylor shift, meaning the talus bone, the square bone, moves towards the fibula because the fibula is broken, and that means that the gap then on the big toe side of the ankle, which we're just going to mark now, widens. Um, and you'll see it's wider there than it is compared to this area just here for the gap between the talus and the tibia on the upper side or the top side. And these patients, if this happens, they'll need surgery with something like that on the right where they need a plate and screws. Um, the reason that happens, that talus shift happens, is because that syndesmosis, that red area, is often broken. Um, and if that happens with the fracture, then the, then the ankle can be unstable and cause you long-term problems, and that's why you need surgery. Now, a Weber C fracture, as I said, occurs above the level of the syndesmosis, so above the level of those red lines. Unfortunately, they almost always need surgery because the syndesmosis, that red area, is almost always broken with these fractures, unless you've copped a direct blow to the leg. So if you copped a direct blow, it's just a fracture, no issues, nothing wrong with the syndesmosis. But if you twisted and caused this fracture, then that means the syndesmosis is gone. Now, this, this is what it looks like on an x-ray there, marked out in the drawing, marked out on the x-ray, um, and unfortunately, these will need surgery. So look, I hope you've enjoyed our talk. Please take a look at one of our other videos. Um, or if you really enjoyed our talk today, please subscribe to the Foot and Ankle Orthopedic Surgeon. We really appreciate you listening and would love for you to subscribe. Uh, thanks very much.